Shalom, my besties. To God be the glory. Please follow all my TS my family on smooth.com. They're all amazing singers. For our primer, we will use this Gucci primer. Alright, so let's use this. Good morning, morning, morning. Epigalia TSMA here. Or TSMA Epigalia here. Alright, so today's highlights we would like to honor the International Women's Day, okay? By celebrating many, many ways in which women all over the globe support women. So, Make sure you blend it. Just put it on your face. That's it. <laughs> so we are celebrating women all over the world. Like what I said, you know, support each other to progress and improve each other's quality of life. All right, so women in positions of influence who advocate for progress All right, across issues central to the lives of women. So for our foundation, we're going to use this Valentino. So women who come together to explore, all right, to learn for their rights. Okay, these women who are primary caregivers, Okay, like here in Alaska, we have a lot of like that, you know, they're caregivers to people of all walks of life. Okay, all right, we're celebrating women who works 24-7, making sure families are taken care of, women who are critically, you know, in the hospital right now, fighting for their, li for their lives, and also for Pregnant women also are celebrating their pregnancies. Women who left their immediate families and joined the military to fight for our freedom. All right. So in honor of women across the globe who are supporting each other, okay, across all aspects of life. So this is for you all, my besties. Okay. Happy International Women's Day. Yay. Shalom. To God be the glory. All right, Pessy. So why is this this International Women's Day very important or very meaningful to you? You can also share in the comment section below. All right. So personally, you know, me personally, we have pimples. All right, so we are supporting these women, you know, supporting women. This year, okay, I was able to spend a lot of time reflecting on all the ways, you know, I've been supported by other women in my life, okay? My Lola, Lolo, eh, my Lola, my mother, okay, my sisters, relatives, cousins, of course, who are female. And yes, my friends who are female. Alright, so I thank the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, for all the blessings in my life. You know, for entrusting me to an awesome family, the Rebote Kayabiab family, whom I've known for 46 years. My family. Alright. They're in the Philippines and Kali, actually all over the world. So thank you, family, for loving me, of course, and my immediate family for accepting me, for raising me, and guiding me throughout the whole 46 years, entirety, you know, 46 years. All right, that's my age, <laughs> entirety of my life, okay? So I wouldn't have it in any other way, so... To my immediate family, my Habibi, my husband Troy, my kids Isaac, Mika, and Brady. Thank you so much for loving Mama, okay, for taking this journey together. Yay! Alright, 
before I will cry. <laughs> you know, I truly believe in Joshua 24, verse 15. And the Bible says, you know, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether, you know, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites. Okay. In whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All right. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right, this. I'll take this vlog to reflect on my my journey in life, okay? Okay. Well, a part of it, okay? You know, the ups and downs of trying to search me, myself, of course. So, after 46 years, God finally answered and put an end or a stop. You know, he gave me an answer to all my inquiries, you know, my queries in life. You know, since birth, you know, I've always benefited from wisdom and support of those who came before me. You know, I, I might be emotional here. I remembered my Lola Eli, okay? My Lola Eli. But... She passed away like 10 or 11 years ago, you know, and my grandparents, I was, I grew up with them. So at an early age, a real traditional disciplinary approach was introduced to me. So I learned from an early age that no one will help you except you. No one will help me except me. So I did not understand really what was going on with my environment, okay? But, you know, at an early age, you kind of like don't know. You know, you don't really understand anything because you're a kid. And you don't have that choice but to obey or else face the consequences. So I didn't know how to deal with my own emotions at that time so, or, or how to handle the hidden tantrums. Okay. You know. I was so like scared that if I don't obey, I'll get a whopping whipping up, you know. So when I see that one slipper is hanging like this, okay, or or a wooden stick, you know, a stick that's sticking up, okay, I better chase the turkeys or I'll face the consequences. So sad thing, there were like, 20 to 25 turkeys okay when i was in first grade that i have you know i couldn't chase them you know it was the other way around but all those turkeys ended up chasing me back home so literally like i helped the turkeys okay go on their way okay to find our home so i learned also how to cook rice at that early age to wash these dishes pick up some manures of cows you know for my grandma okay that's for the that's to fertilize our mangoes and i learned how to like wipe the handles of swords help my lolo i was his um little secretary when i was um in the first grade so my, you know they made some swords and i learned also how to count that way so i learned patience all right from my grandparents and i learned also from an early age that you know the hardest things in life has the best rewards as in cheers to that let's drink diet pepsi you know i was giving grandpa back rubs we call that in the philippines goo goo okay you know that's like every day when i was Four years old i started actually three years old for four years old and then you know and that taught me some valuable lessons perseverance humility courage okay you know 
and hard work, the hard way, but with rewards, of course. So I was given soda or pop every time I goo goo or back rub my lolo, which is really, really funny. All right, so we will add some yellow. Okay, so you know my besties. Okay, this is Jacqueline Hill Murphy. All right. So you know my best is to sum up my life experiences, you know, this is what I learned in this life, so, which is, you know, actually my core purpose, you know, so I learned in life, hold on, in order for you to make it, you need to fail, <laughs> like actually, you actually need to fail. Okay. In order to make it, failing is the foundation of learning. And when you learn something, you know there is a purpose why you failed in the first place. So use that purpose as your ground, motivational ladder. Okay. You have to keep climbing. Baby steps. Keep on climbing. Keep climbing. But while you're climbing, of course, take short, deep breaths. Climbing those ladders or steps sometimes breaks you down. You know, resiliency or mental toughness is the key. Now, when you're up there, it's not going to be easy. The harder you climb, okay, there will be lots of obstacles in that process. So you gain mastery. You master your talents, your passions, resiliency, besties, humility, and the courage to not giving up. But these things needs to have a drive. You have to have a drive to do all these things. That determination to succeed. Your drive, my besties, is your faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to Use this tipsy girl, all right? Just gonna uh, a little bit. Oh, colorful. So that all things are possible if you are partnered with the Lord. All things are possible when you are partnered with the Lord. Always remember that. You know, the Bible said, Pesis. Remember in Psalm. Oh, I mean, Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Pray that prayer, that first besties, when you have, when something's bothering you. That's in Proverbs 3. Five to six. Okay. So, I am grateful for all, you know, have all the blessings. And will always see those ups and downs as my inspiration. That's my inspiration from my past. Inspiration from my past. All right, besties. So, I admire, literally admire, the ways I see women in my life, okay, standing up for each other and their values so dearly. So, I'm going to add this therapy sesh. All right, this therapy sesh. So, besties, on today's vlog, we are doing purple. That's the color of International Women's Day. Is purple. All right. So purple. Why purple? It is a combination of blue and red. Traditionally, you know, seen as male and female colors. Together, represents the idea of a gender quality. Blue and red. A female and male. So, the unity of men and women in the fight for women's rights. 
All right. So the color purple around the world, you know, seen since how many years ago? Decades, maybe. Is used to signify confidence, power. It represents the idea, you know, women taking control of their lives and also fighting for their rights. All right, so let's use this, not my journey. All right. So in, in the U.S., the National Women's Party, they use gold as their colors, white, purple. All right. Oh, this one is purple. So whatever the origins and, you know, theories, purple has adopted as the color of feminism. Remember? When you like flowers, remember? Your mom will ask you, what color you like? Oh, dress, purple, pink. It is the color that symbolizes wisdom, okay? Intuition, spirituality, which aligns with some feminist principles, okay? That encourages us women to trust our instincts and our inner voices. Mm. All right, so down here we're gonna add some purple too. So this International Women's Day, whether young or old, okay, you know, don't just restrict yourselves to wearing the color purple to show your support. I don't know, maybe it's high time, okay? To see the world with a purple aura. <laughs> the watercolors or the cascades purple. <laughs> or the ambience purple or whatever, you know. You know, whatever size, maybe noise, sounds, smells, you know. Even the sensations, you know, or textures can easily like feel the air all right use your imagination use your imagination all right and i'm gonna add this so this year's theme is digital all digital digital you know innovation and technology highlights the role of innovative technology in promoting gender equality and meeting the health and developmental like needs okay of girls and women all right so to all the beautiful beautiful people who are watching us right now you know all the women in the world okay this vlog is for you Actually, it's for everybody, but you know, all you beautiful souls, you know, are shaped by, let's say, not ugly, but, you know, ugly circumstances, okay? I call those trials and tri tribulations, you know, circumstances, and wanted circumstances, you know. You know, say this words with me my besties i am the bended i am hurt but not broken i am the power of the thunderstorms and lightning i am the beauty in the beast okay i am the strength in the weakness i am the confidence in the midst of the doubt I am a woman with a beautiful soul. Woohoo! Happy International Women's Day, my besties. All right. So, besties. Okay, so this is just the black, okay? And just add it here. So, it's not a shame, really. If one has to go through emotional, some ups and downs, turbulences, you know, tribulations, trials, Hardships in life. Don't be shy. You're not alone. 
when you are not alone. So my best is know that you are chosen by God, okay? If you accepted the Lord, then you are chosen. You're the chosen one. So give thanks to the Lord. Even if you are in the trial season, pray to God unceasingly. Pray to God to bend you, to bend me, to bend us all. Bend us, Lord. There is power in your hunger for God. Amen. Okay, my best is. So my best is. If you know you are in a mess right now, as in, as in a mess right now, okay? And you can't see a way out of it. All right, so I'm going to just park this. All right, maybe. Oh, wait, that's the drink first. We have our advertisement. Drink diet Pepsi. Maybe your eyes are just like seeing the horizon right now. And you can't see what is around the bend. Okay, so God said, I'll be waiting there for you. I'll be waiting there for you. In this uncertain world, you will always face uncertainties. But I am going to walk the journey with you. That is so beautiful. My best is, it may not be clear to you right now, but the Lord said, I will cause all things to work together for good for your good i am in the business of making beauty from ashes of redeeming what seems hopeless and crafting you into a work of art that shows the world my mercy and goodness oh, thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. So I'm gonna use this, right? I know you are hurt. Maybe you are angry. But don't lose hope, my besties. The Lord said, I am with you every step of your journey. Even through the darkest valleys and in the middle of the scariest storms. I will be with you. Right, the Lord says, I love you more than you can even possibly begin to understand. Alright. So pray, my besties. Pray and hear that voice. Close your eyes and over and over again to remind us all that God, our God, is alive and he is the omnipotent God and nothing nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's So be encouraged not only today but every day of your lives for even the awareness of your loss of hunger is a pull. It is a pull from the spirit. I'm inviting everyone. My the table is being set. And a move, a move of God is on the way. One that has never been tasted before. Amen. Amen to that. Amen, Lord. Lord bend me. Lord, bend us. Bend us, Lord. It's our cry today. Jesus, we need your help to get low. Bend us today. Bend me, Lord. When we pray, besties, remember, remember this. When God, remember when he gave manna to the Israelites, you know? 
Remember that passage in the Bible? And when the layer of a dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness, okay, was a small, small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. That is Exodus 16, verse 14. The manna covered the ground. Remember, and everyone who gathered it, without exception, had to stoop, stoop low, bend, okay, to pick up the bread. To pick up the bread. I believe these words are a flag of the Holy Spirit. The best is calling us all people on YouTube all over the world to take notice. There are some treasures that we will access. Okay. As we bend spiritual, spiritually, there's a spiritual food will be made available to you right now. As we get low, as we get low for the Lord. As the psalmist, you know, wrote, it says that human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. That is in Psalm 78.25. In our is there are more or there are some gifts and encounters that we will only receive as we bend in his presence. Seeing Jesus is with you. Seeing Jesus is with you. Remember when Mary Magdalene, okay, lingered at the empty tomb. What happened there? For it was the last place she knew her Lord to be. Okay, I'm gonna add this one down here John 20 and Mary okay, stooped and wept then as she looked inside she saw two angels in white one was at the head and the other at the foot of where Jesus had lain all right So afterward, when she turned around, she became the first one to see Jesus after the resurrection. All right, this is. So I believe there are some, you know, we need to do some reading on this. Okay. So you can relate to Mary. It feels us like... um Though you, you like stooped and wept, okay? Then you've wondered at times where God is. And especially where God is for you. Alright, so I'm gonna add this purple one right here. So today, my best is Jesus says, Beloved, turn around, okay? Turn around. See that I am here. I am with you. As Mary did, you are about to receive your commissioning. Alright, so we are going to add this on here. So the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. So my best is, are we willing to bend order to receive the mantle God has for us. You know, Elisha knew it was the Lord's time to take Elijah, you know, his mentor and leader to heaven. So he pursued Elijah, okay? 
and would not turn back. So even the prophet, okay, urge him to leave. All right, so I'm gonna add this black. So he even followed Elijah, you know, across the river so that it seemed to those watching that Elisha has pursued Elijah to the point of no return. All right. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? So Elisha said, Please let a dob double portion of your spirit be upon me. So that's, it, that's in Second Kings 2 verse 9. The one single thing I asked for. It was as though Elisha said. Alright. That breath of God. That anointing of the Holy Spirit on your life. It is the one single thing I asked for. And, and as your spiritual heir, okay, I ask for the double portion. Then, as Elijah was suddenly taken up to heaven, okay, with an angelic like contingent, okay, one item of like a clothing dropped from him, okay. Mm, I kind of want to put something. A little bit. So Elisha bent down. He stooped to pick up Elijah's mantle. All right. I'm gonna add some red. Okay. Today, okay. Let us cry. Bend us, Lord, for God is clothing us with His power as we worship Him. What if the best God has for you is beneath, like beneath you? What is God? What, you know, God is saying, I have more for you. I have, I have the bread of angels to, to sustain you. But then we discover it is beneath, beneath us. So, how is that, my blessings? When we say something is beneath you or beneath us, okay, we declare we are beyond that. It's beneath us, behind. Okay, we have matured and, and moved on. So, it may be like foundational or be an act of service others could do so we might believe we have advanced okay beyond a simple devotional act i'm just gonna add red here so it would never occur to us that god might take us back to basics it's this is like a reminder that in the kingdom of god leaders okay demonstrate greatness when they stoop to serve remember if the, you have a visitor what do you do you stoop down right and give them food so today see jesus washing his disciples feet all right hold on see also your influence okay breaking out in the most unlikely ways 
and through humble means. So in an act, all right, reminiscent of the mana provision, Jesus multiplied loaves. Remember, he also multi multiplied fishes, you know, to feed hungry crowds. All right, so that's done. I'm going to add our eyebrows. So then my best is afterwards, okay. Jesus then, he told, hold on, hold on. He told his disciples to gather the leftovers. That's in John 6, 12 and 13. Remember, he said that to his disciples, gather the leftovers. So I wonder if it crossed the disciples' minds. They would say, leftovers? Really, Lord? On the ground? Isn't that like rubbish? All right. <laughs> Because it rained fish and bread, remember? Yet the disciples bent, okay, to gather the discarded pieces of loaves and that were on the ground and gathered like 12 basketfuls of bread. That's a lot. So today, my best is, um, I hear him say, there's another miracle I found for you. Or I have for you that you will only receive as you bend, as you stoop, stoop down, okay, as you get low to serve and receive. So this one, my best is it's a signed and an overflow provision. Where's my ear? Okay, this one. All right, so when we bend, we adjust our posture, right? From sitting up or standing up, we bend down like that. This is speaks of a change of hearts, a change of attitude, as well as the willingness to serve and receive. All right, so we're going to add... So, there is... Power in the bending, my best is. We discover there is a table set before us. One we never anticipated today. My best is. This International Women's Day, may our cry together be, bend us, O Lord, bend us, Lord, and open our eyes, open our hearts to see you amen besties all right so that's the one so james 1 12 says blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love Him. Amen. First Peter 5.10 And after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace, who has called you to this eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. That's in Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. John 16, 33. Alright. Amen to that. The Lord said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I 
have overcome the world. Amen. That's First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to men. God is faithful, my besties, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to, to endure it. Amen. James 1, 2. Verse 4, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let this steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. Amen to that. That's in Romans 5, 3, 2, 6. Okay, let's add this black eyeliner. Okay. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. The endurance produces character, and that character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. All right, besties, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. All right. So let's add this. So Romans 8. 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Amen. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. Alright. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. Alrighty. So trials and tribulations refer to the challenges we endure or endure in life that tests our faith, our love, our hope, and a lot more. So why God allows these trials and tribulations? Alright. I just have to rub it. So here's what I, I have learned on my walk of faith. So you have to be on guard. Be on guard. Because when you're asking all these questions, okay? All the whys in the world. Like why I'm suffering this and that. So why I lost my houses. Why I lost my jobs. Why I have this disease. Why I lost all my cars, my friends. And you begin to question God. So best this. You see, Satan will try to attack. And he will say, No, God doesn't love you. Look at those unbelievers who are not going through adversity. He will attack you and question your faith. So, but you say Jesus Christ died for you and yet 
you are going through the worst troubles of your life when when you say that okay because he will really like attack you attack your faith okay so best is may i tell you this okay don't let the devil give you fear actually you can rebuke him and he will flee from you all right so give your 100 percent trust in the lord trust in the lord with all your heart okay and lean not on your own understanding trust the process trust the bending season for in due time when you pass all the, the test of trials you know all, all the challenges withstand the waiting withstand the pain okay and the waiting process the bending or the molding process if you stay true with your faith in the lord you know until the end he will reward you okay amen to that our best is trials can lead into sometimes you question if there's god that can lead to that when your faith is too small the devil can rip it out so don't let him don't let him put you in despair or bitterness towards god don't ever forget the other times okay god has delivered you because he will do it again so satan will try to say it was a coincidence but with god there is no coincidence cry out to god bend on your knees cry out to god block satan off and always remember that we have victory in jesus christ amen the trials and tribulations okay you see trials and tribulations teaches us what we are they dig up the soil and let us see what we are made of all right so prayer my besties is the best best armor prayer is the best armor against all trials and tribulations remember a gem cannot be polished without friction you have to rub it in nor a man perfected without these tribulations in life so being on a spiritual path does not prevent us besties from facing the darkness or these tribulations but it teaches you you and me how to use the darkness as a tool to grow like when you're painting okay you need darkness in order to see the light so what does the bible say about trials and tribulations let's see when you are like a runner remember you you are facing all these kinds of trials in life but that's a sign of training have you ever heard of like a master sergeant who got to where he was without going through tough tough situations in life or a commander or a captain whoever you know god has to prepare his children for the future that's why we need to bend you know he needs to bend us okay my best is my life i remember when you know when i said why god why this and why that there was a time that i questioned also so god told me to wait for his timing god has delivered me in the past by my past experiences but when you are like going through bad times okay all you're thinking about is right now i've seen god use trials to build me up to build my family answer different prayers he opened doors 
help others and I've seen many miracles okay where I knew it was only God who could have done this like when I had that um stroke promise to God there was no one in the room but I felt that hand when I prayed after I prayed like squeezed squeezed my shoulder right here I know that was him I know he was with me so during those times, you know, when I was worrying, the Lord gave me comfort, motivation, encouragement. He was actually working behind the scenes. If us believers were burdened, okay, by all these worries, by when our sisters or brothers suffer, when they got sick, stuff like that, imagine how God feels. Always remember that He loves you and me. He reminds us time after time in His Word that He will never forsake us. All right. Amen to that. I just have to like blend it like this. So trials help us persevere. So James 1 12 God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation afterward they will receive a crown of life that God has promised to those who love him that's in Hebrews 10 35 to 36 so do not throw away your confidence. It will be, take note, richly rewarded. So you have to have confidence in God. Trust. You have to have faith. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Alright. Amen to that. Amen. Amen to that. So Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Remember what he said? Our favorite one. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. That's why I say earlier, I said earlier, always pray. And he will show you which path to take. So my best is, sometimes my best is, we suffer because of our own mistakes. Not only sometimes, but most of the time. So another thing is, we should never test the capacity or the power of the Lord. Alright. So in my life, I've suffered before in the past. I followed the wrong voice. So I did my will. Instead of asking God's will, you know, and I can't blame God for my mistakes. But what I can say is God brought me through. God brought me through it and made me stronger and stronger and smarter in the process. That's because of the love and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. So... Joshua 4, 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest, my priest, because you have ignored the law of your God. I also will ignore, I also will ignore my, I mean, your children. Whew. So Proverbs 
19, 2 to 3. The Lord said, Desire without knowledge is not good, but much more will hasty feet miss the way. A person's own fully leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. So this you have to just blend it. So Galatians 6, 5, assume your own responsibility. You have to own it. If you make a mistake, you apologize to the Lord. All right, so God is making you more humble. Okay, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh. A messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. <sighs> Proverbs 18 verse 12. Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor there you go first peter 5 6 verse 8 verse 6 to 8 humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Alright, my best is. Hebrew 12, 5, verse, verse 5 to 11. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. Amen. And he chastens everyone. He accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. You have to endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Remember? If you are not disciplined, my besties, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Real parents will discipline their own kids because they love them so much and they don't want them to grow bad. So moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. So how much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, you know. But God, my best is, disciplines us for our good. Okay, in order that we may share in His holiness. So do not be dismayed because no discipline seems pleasant at that time, but painful. So later on, however, 
it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So if, for example, you're experiencing tribulations, okay, and trials, don't see that as, you know, like Jesus doesn't love you. Jesus loves you so much. That's why he was trying to bend you. The Proverbs 3, 11 to 13. My child, do not reject the Lord's discipline. And don't get angry when he corrects you. Like what I said, the Lord corrects those he loves just as parents correct the child they delight in. So happy is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding. So beautiful. That's so beautiful, besties. So you can become more dependent on the Lord. There you go. Amen. Alright, so Second Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 11. So each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, the hardships, you know, persecutions and troubles, you know, that I suffer for Christ. So when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. 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 So I'm going to use this face palette. All right. And do some contouring. So God wants to spend time with you, besties. But you lost your first love. You're doing all these things for Jesus. But you're not spending quality, some quality, quiet time with the Lord. Remember, prayer, 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 pray. Mm. No, Psalm 7, I mean Psalm 9, 7 to 10. But the Lord rules forever. He sits on his throne to judge. And he will judge the world in fairness. Okay, he will decide what is fair for the nations the Lord defends those who suffer. He defends them in times of trouble. So those who know the Lord, you know, those who know the Lord, trust Him because He will not leave those who come to Him. Alright, so I'm going to add this contour over here. So Psalm 37, 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you for real. I never doubt God's love. So in the modern world, my best is we face trials, tribulations in life that are novel to mankind. Okay? The tribulations that have been present since Eve, since Adam. You know, these are like the temptations of pride. Ego. Temptations of ego. Okay, so while there are many new um, challenges in the post-modern age we, we now live in, okay, the essence of suffering, okay, all this pain remains the same. So, a separation from God. Alright, so distractions from God have ex existed since the fall of Eve and Adam. So only now more like technologically advanced, all right, because of all these technologies. It has been said that psychological sufferings of Christ Christians today, the believers, we believers today, will parallel, you know, 
the physical trials of early Christian martyrs. So, my best is we are bombarded with trivial entertainment, okay? All these social medias, you know, constant ad advertising, stuff like that, you know. Anxiety or stress fuel news, like in the TV or Facebook, stuff like that. Your phone, your television. So, we must really, really guard our hearts and minds, okay, against such worldly obstructions, okay? from from our faith and we have to be constant in prayer pray unceasingly do not love the world or the things in the world okay so if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him first john 2 5 i mean first john 2 verse 15 so thankfully you know when we have these trials or tribulations in life, we like reset. We recalibrate our priorities and we prioritize, you know, treas the treasures of the heart to seek the trans transcendent love of God. So in our suffering in this world, we are hopeful. We hopefully look to the eternal life given by Christ. Who saves us from all our sins and death. So God calls us all to repentance. To repent from our sins. And to rejoin him in baptism as faithful Christians. You see, sometimes hard times, you know, are the only way we'll get the message. The Lord will test you. He will test your faith. And, <clears throat> excuse me said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, okay? But take heart, I have overcome the world. So that's John 16, 20, not John 16, 33, 33. There you go. All right, best is. So all of us go through these tribulations in life. Throughout our lives, of course. So while those trials are difficult, the Bible says in James 1, okay, verse 2 to 3, to consider it joy when you encounter various tribulations or trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, patience, like that. There are also, like, a lot of people going through tough times, you know, trials in life, in the Bible, and of, you know, those, those people growing in their faith because of it. They actually grew their faith because of those trials, so... <sighs> Let me see. So, examples of trials in the Bible that benefited the person. Hmm. Examples in the Bible, you know, going through adversities in their lives. And in those times, you know, they grow closer to God. The following, you know, people. If you heard, you know, the examples of God taking a, like, a hard hard situation, you know, for the good of God's glory. The Lord also experienced. So there are multiple like examples of overcoming hardships in the Bible. Remember, remember Joseph? Remember Moses? Remember that? Alright, so, you know, Mesha, Shadrach, you know, Abed, Abednego, Abednego, Ruth, Naomi, okay, okay, like for example, Joseph, 
the biggest examples of a person going through some rough, rough times, you know, becoming better, you know, for it is Joseph. Joseph's brothers traded him. They actually traded him. You know, he traded him in to become a enslaved person in Genesis 3. Oh, I mean 37. So he went through many difficult trials, you know, as a result of that. So at the end of his life, okay, Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis 50, 20, he said, As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about, you know, this present result. Which is to keep people, keep many people alive. Keep many people alive. So, this is a wonderful example of what God does for us in our lives. Just as God was with Joseph. You know, throughout his many, many, many trials. Right. So God is with us through those hard times. You see, Joseph, like, learned to be gracious toward his brothers. You know, he learned to show love, grace to them, even, even though they did not deserve it. Okay. So... Excuse me. He also learned to trust God throughout his life. You know. So Moses also is another one example of God's people being put through many, many trials and tribulations. Gaining endurance, you know, from them, from all the tribulations. So Moses, my besties, is the man who leads the Hebrew people out of slavery so the book of exodus is all about god's people okay coming out of slavery and making their way to the promised land all right so this is highlighter So Moses and the Hebrew people encountered a lot of trials. And each of these trials, you know, served as a way for God to purify the Hebrew people and a way for them to grow in their in their faith. It's like a blessing in disguise. So what about Mesha, Abednego, and Shadrach? So at the beginning of the book of Daniel, you know, these three Jewish men, okay, they stood up for what they believed, okay, by refus refusing to worship a false god or an idol, like the wooden thing, you know, statue like that. So, you know, in response to that, King Nebuchadnezzar orders them to be thrown into the furnace, okay? The furnace, the fire, to perish. But their faith and devotion to God were so, so strong that they survived, okay? And unharmed. See the power of the word. So these men had such a strong faith amid this trial or tribu tribulations that God protected them when they should have died. So because of their faith, my best is the king says, the king Nebuchadnezzar said, he responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, okay, <coughs> Meshach and Abednego. Who has sent his angel and rescued his servants who put their trust in him? So violating the king's command, thus 
and surrender their bodies, okay, rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or population, or any language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses made a rubbish heap. Okay. Because there is no other God who is able to save in this way. That's in Daniel 3, 20 to 29. All right. All right, so don't forget this. All right, and your cheek. Cheek bone. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. I'm gonna add blush, 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 blush. Uh, I'll use this Valentine. It's okay. Blush. My best is the truth is God uses our trials to better us it's kind of like a blacksmith uses uses this intense intense heat okay to shape a piece of metal into something beautiful like when i was a kid i always watch my grandpa you know he was a blacksmith so we believe what James 1, chapter 1, verse 1, I mean 2, 2, 3 says. There are many, many examples in the Bible, you know, where this is proven that God uses trials to purify our hearts, to better us, my basis, so that when we gain endurance and so that we, we can gain patience, endurance, all right. You just have to put the blush like that. All right, let me see. Mm. Okay, we're just gonna add lipstick. So why does God allow allow us to go through trials and tribulations? All right, this is Jacqueline Hill. So one of the most like difficult parts of being a Christian, all right, or parts of a Christian life is the fact that becoming a disciple of Christ does not make you or me immune to life's trials and tribulations. So why would a good and loving God allow us to go through such things as the death of a child and stuff like that? Like diabetes, stroke, okay, diseases, injury to ourselves, and our loved ones, you know, f some financial hardships. We suffer from worry, uh, fear. Surely, if he loved us, he would take all these things away from us. After all, doesn't loving us means he wants our lives to be easy and comfortable? What do you think my best is? No, it doesn't. So the Bible clearly teaches us that God loves those those who are his children, his children, and he works all things together for good for us. That's in Romans 8 to 28. Romans 8, 28. So that must mean that the trials and tribulations he allows in our lives are part of the working process. It is a part of the working together for, you know, working together of all things for good. So therefore, as a believer, who 
for the believers, all trials and tribulations must have a divine purpose. All right, besties. So, as in like all things, God's ultimate purpose for us is to grow more and more into the image of His Son. Romans 8, 29. Let me say this one. You know, this, this is the goal of a Christian in everything in life, including tribulations in life, you know, which is designed to enable us to reach that goal, right? That mission. So it is a part of the process of sanctification, being set apart of God's purpose and like fitted to live for His glory. So, the way trials accomplish this is explained in First Peter chapter 1, 6-7. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials or tribulations. That the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, you know, which perishes or vanishes, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the true believer's faith will be made sure by the trials and tribulations we experience so that we can rest in the knowledge that it is real okay and will last forever all right so trials develop godly character and it also enables us to rejoice in our sufferings okay because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope, okay, does not disappoint us. If we hope, we have faith. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. That's Romans 5, 3 to 5. So Jesus. Jesus Christ set the perfect example. But God, okay, demonstrates his own love towards us. In that, you know, while we were yet sinners. So Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. So this Verses in the scripture, you know, reveals aspects of the Lord's divine purpose for both Jesus Christ's um, trial and tribulations and ours too. So, persevering proves our faith. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 That is a very, very beautiful Bible verse. So my best is however, however we must be careful never make like excuses for our trials and tribulations if they are a result of our own wrongdoing by no means you know let any of you suffer as a murderer or a thief you know evildoers or, or a troublesome troublesome meddler so first Peter four fifteen. Okay, God will forgive our sins because the eternal punishment for them has been paid by Christ's sacrifice on the cross in Calvary. So however we still have to suffer the natural like consequences in this life for our sins and bad bad decisions in life or bad choices in life. You know, but God uses even those sufferings to mold us 
to shape us for His purposes and our ultimate good. So always remember, besties, that trials and tribulations come with both a purpose and a reward. So consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various tribulations in life or trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So let endurance have its perfect result. So for our lipstick, I'm going to apply this Gucci lipstick. So, you know, that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing so blessed is the man who perseveres under trial for once he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him that's in james 1 verses 2 to 4 and also 12 So, through all of life's trials and tribulations, we have the victory. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Although we are in a spiritual battle, okay, Satan has no authority over the believer in Christ. God has given us His Word to guide us, His Holy Spirit to enable us, my besties, and the privilege of coming to Him anywhere, at any time, to pray about anything. All right. Okay, so the purpose of trials, my besties, may be found to result in praise, praises and all glory, glorifying the Lord and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the trials in our lives test our faith. They prove the genuineness of our faith, which is more precious than gold that vanishes or perishes. So how do these trials it strengthens our faith, my besties. So James says trials help us to know that they test our faith and that the testing of our faith produces endurance. So endurance is the power to stand in the midst of difficult circumstances or situations, you know, without giving way, all right, without quitting, kind of like that. Okay, oh, I like that one. <laughs> you know that God shapes his servants through trials. So the one thing that is certain in life, my best is, is that change will be the constant. There will, there, there will always be changes in life. We will have like good moments. We will have difficult times, rough times. Okay. Sometimes it's more of the rough times. So in peaceful moments, it is easy to turn to our Lord. But like in turbulence, it can be difficult. All right. So a way to ease our sufferings in those most or more difficult moments or times in our lives is to already have made a habit practice praying practice a skill of turning to the lord trusting god in both good and bad times not only in good times but also bad times so bestis i have a question do you feel like there is no one to assist you in your current like feelings of vulnerability do you feel that the world you know even the those 
relatives of yours, family mem members who are who, those who are closest to you, you know, do not see you, do not hear you, or generally not reliable. You know, since God created us, He wants us to depend on Him and only, only Him. Only Him. So He gifted us all with His sacred word. So God's ineffable like wisdom in His word can be your anchor. You can hold on to that in the turbulent waters, in whatever storm, you know at sea you may be facing right now from east to west north to south you know many verses in the bible bible can help you practice trusting the lord and the lord only in your trials so you can experience the truth of our living god who is our rock and foundation who sees you and hears you he stays right here next to us in our hearts you know even when we in our limited understanding you know feel he may be like far away kind of like that let me drink real quick so you can use this verse as soon in times of prayer and meditation you know to overcome fear worries discouragements you know the word in the scripture okay the word of god you know tells us to incessantly like pray unceasingly and turn to him in our lives so make that connection a habit with him on you know and dependence on him as a way of life Turn his word into prayers, like what I said. When you wake up in the morning, pray right away. Okay, you open a conversation and stay in that conversation with God during your most um, calm days, okay? As well as stormy days. If possible, like every second you pray. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> you know, especially when I'm driving. So Bible verses for trusting God that you can use you know, especially when facing trials, you know, you can have a notebook handy and write that down. Meditate when you're in the car or you're on your break, you know, when you are tempted to lose hope or when you feel angry, angry, okay? And also when the waters may be calmer. So you have to keep that steady and constant relationship with the Lord in good and in bad times, so. Within a consistent practice, you know, in relationship with the Lord. So pray, pray, pray unceasingly. Repetition of that habit is always the key. Alright. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will make your paths straight he will do that as this proverbs 3 5 to 6 so i'm gonna add this eyeliner so best is this verses map out a plan for you there's a plan you trust god don't rely on yourselves always seek god's will and look for the ways, you know, He shows you. So, make this your prayer habit. A prayer habit every day. Every day. And your faith will become stronger and you will see. It will grow. It will grow in no time. So, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Okay? So, do not be afraid. Do not fear or be dismayed. That's in Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. Alright, so let's add this one. Okay, so what a comfort it is to know that God never leaves us. 
Not for success. So that's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And he is right beside you. He always... Oh, oh. See that? He leads the way and always is staying with you. Because of this truth, you can surrender your fear and discouragement. And even your gratitude and joy to him. Oh, I right. must see this one. Okay, I'm gonna do something. Surrender your entire heart to our living God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and hope. That's in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. So in the flesh, we have limited understanding. Limited understanding. And in difficult times, this feeling of uncertainty may feel even more present. God still holds your future in His hands. There you go, my besties. Besties, he, he wants the best for you. For you and me. As you trust, as we trust and rely on Him and His word, His promises, He will renew your hope and fill your hearts with joy. He will fill your heart with His love. So my best is, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. That's John 8, 36. So do you perceive that you are in bondage to something or someone? As a believer, you have freedom from all bondage through Jesus. Like you are in bondage with fornication, stuff like that, or vices, you know. He will help you not feel overtaken by your trial your trials but remind you me and you that he's walking beside beside you in it so therefore therefore my best is you see whatever you asked in prayer best is you have to believe that you have received it when you ask in prayer and it will be yours that's a promise that's in mark 11 verse 24 let me see this one Ooh. so prayer can be a great comfort and it's very very powerful so you hold you have to hold on to the word of the lord jesus christ his promises you know, God wants to hear everything from you. Okay, so nothing is too small or too big. If it's the will of the Lord, you ask for the will of the Lord. You ask in prayer, then He will give that to you. So pour out your hearts in prayer. Asking God for what you want. So trust Him. Trust Him. To provide the wisest like answer okay of course in his perfect timing he knows your motives he knows your intentions he can read your minds he knows what's inside your hearts so he said have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's in Joshua 1, 9. So we can be strong and courageous, my besties. Even in our trials, when we trust that God will be with us. Okay? If your tribulations or trials causes you to worry... Close your eyes, kneel down, 
pray and picture God. God is in front of you or surrounding you, guiding you. Visualize Him fighting for you. You know, doing all the heavy lifting <clears throat> for you. He is faithful to the ones He loves. Hold on to that promise, my besties. And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. He said, He will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So what are you lacking in your time of tribulation? As your perfect heavenly provider, okay? You see, my best is if we only open our hearts to Him, surrender our lives to Him, God is ready and willing to give you what you need. Even you didn't even pray, or you were, were about to pray, He knows already what you are going to ask. So ask Him for what you need. And trust Him okay, to provide this for you. And always remember that Jesus is our rock and our salvation. Jesus is our Savior. Do not forget that, my besties. Just delight yourself in the Lord. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. Even in the most difficult times, you can praise God's character and faithfulness because this never changes, you know. You have to take delight in this truth. So we're just going to add our eyelashes. Alright, so trust the desires of your heart to Him daily. And he will comfort you. He will. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your stuff will comfort me. That's in Psalm 23, verse 4. My best is God is your light in the darkest moments. He will save you and protect you. So my best is, remember, when you are tempted to be fearful because of all these trials, trials, remember this verse and allow God's love and light to wash over you and possess your mind, your heart, and your soul. So, when the righteous cry, for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. That's in Psalm 34, verse 17. So God wants you to call to Him for help. In humility and conscientious righteousness you see he will help you in many many ways if only you ask and surrender your lives to him surrender your will to his will so best is call upon me in the day of trouble i will deliver you and you shall glorify me psalm 50 15. So you can call on the Lord Jesus Christ always, any time of the day. Keep close to Him in prayer, and He promises to set your paths straight. So always focus on the Lord and believe on His Word. So for you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you.
Psalm 86, 5. Remember when you call on God that He is abounding in love to you. He always has good in mind for you and constantly offers you forgiveness for your mistakes. So meditate on this promise, okay? My besties. When you need assurance that God cares for you. Alright, so I'm just gonna add this. So there is therefore therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. That's Romans 8 1. So no matter how difficult your life may seem, you know, to feel right now. God is using what happens for your ultimate good. You may not be able to see this in this moment, at this very moment, but you may someday be able to see it through, you know, you know, to see it in hindsight. Or it may be also that in some trials, you know, we may never know why God allows them to happen. But know that God wants you to trust, trust in his grand plan, that he is orchestrating all things and ultimately it is for your own good. And, you know, a good that you may not even understand with our limited understanding, you know, in our flesh driven existence. So my best is, hold on, for I am sure that neither death or life, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's in Romans 8, 38 to 39. Yes, is this passage holds a great, great encouragement for people going through difficult times. So despite the problems you are facing, God's love for you is strong and constant. And always remember that nothing can separate us from it. So as you Meditate on this verse, okay? Soak in God's love for you. May His unending love be your reliance. Strengthen your faith. Sanctify or clean your hearts, okay? Despite any circumstances, you know, that you might perceive to be difficult, okay? And that may His amazing love and grace carry you through for the days of your, for the rest of your days or for the rest of your lives so for example my business today you are in a midst of a battle right now so receive a fresh gift of faith from your heavenly father be reminded of the power of his promises concerning you concerning me concerning your family so even though you may be down to nothing as in nothing financially nothing there is an extraordinary kingdom shaking its power that can launch your comeback. So just trust the will of the Lord. The power for your turn around. The power of turn around. All right. This is a standing order. It is the word of God's delivering power. The power of deliverance and it resounds through all the ages so it is a scripture and it's alive and active now hebrew 4 12 words are powerful and it's active it's alive okay a standing order meaning it is a military order or ruling that is retained irrespective of changing conditions 
forever. So forever, O oh Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. So Psalm 119, verse 89. Now, besties, to all the women, women who are watching this video right now, I truly, truly admire all your achievements in life, okay? Your jobs, you know, what you contributed to the world. You made names in all social medias, right? You were as you're a successful doctor, okay? Successful doctors, nurses, lawyers, right? Administrators, dentists. Okay. And I get that, but remember this my besties. Remember this. God's work in us is not by our own piety or power you know you see god not only works through us remember as paul paul wrote god wills in us okay if we have any like good inclinations or desires god gets the phrase okay for he wills good in us that's in Philippians 2, 13. Okay, my best, the first chapters of Acts, the book of Acts, the church is just beginning. So, Acts 2, Peter stands up and declares the word of Christ, okay? Leading to many being pricked to the heart and saved. So, following in Acts 3, to confirm the word, God grants Peter, okay? To heal a blind beggar. That's in Acts 3, 4 to 11. So I'm just gonna add some more contour. So understandably, this leads to people to be utterly astounded. Acts 3, 11. So what is Peter's response to such awe or astonishment? How does he initially react? If you notice the first thing he says in Acts 3, 12, he said, he said, while clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded, they ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter, okay, saw it, he addressed the people. He said, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we have made him walk. Question mark. That's in Acts 3, 11 to 12. What is Peter's first response to the marveling at the healing? It isn't just, well, believe in Jesus. He goes deeper. He first wants to clarify what happened and how it occurred. A man who previously couldn't walk now walks, but how? Not by our own power. <sighs> All right, so Peter clarifies later, okay, that Jesus made it possible, that Jesus made it possible happened specifically peter a little you know jumbled like he explained and his name by faith has made this man strong whole you see and know and the faith that is through jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all acts 3 16 Alright, so we acknowledge that God's power works through us and wills in us. So Peter, Peter's careful choice of words is very striking. It's not our power, but it's God's power through us. And it's not our piety either. 
Okay. This is the word piety that Peter uses can also be trans translated as godliness. So it was because Peter, okay, had a certain level of godliness that the healing happened. So nor was it that he had some unique in like power, power, powerful prayer, you know, time of piety that God ultimately decided to work through him so it was not through his power okay rather than it was jesus all grace it was all jesus so this is we must agree to take what the bible says and believe it even if it is sometimes confusing so for us you might be thinking yet peter says a few sentences later that it was faith in his name that led that led to the healing happening so on one hand we acknowledge that faith is the conduit to you know of the grace the grace of god so to say it another way peter first and foremost understood that it was jesus who did the healing as all good works you know, are Jesus working through us? So right away he said, it isn't his power nor his piety. It wasn't by anything in him that Jesus worked. It was freely Jesus and only, only Jesus. All right. So Christ worked through faith. For faith is merely the channel Okay, a vessel for God to work. So, in his name, by faith, in his name, has made this man strong strong, and can walk again. So, the faith that is through Jesus has given the man the perfect health in the presence of you all. Acts 3, 16. There you go. So, I'm just going to add... A liner okay so it is the faith that is through Jesus that has given the man health the emphasis isn't on the faith but the important part is through Jesus amen so let's hold on to Jesus so it as for us like for our the faith doesn't matter for it is a conduit for Christ working and willing through us. But also at the same time, like we must believe what Peter believed. Neither our power or piety is why God works through us. We rather are vessels, vessels like a bus who merely receive him and he can use us if he wills. In this way, if anything does happen, we can gladly declare with Peter that it is not by our power nor our piety. So, there we saw that God not only works but also wills in us. So, he gets all the glory. To God be the glory. So, here from Peter, we see that when he does work through us, it it's not only not because of our power but it's also not because of our superior piety so once again he alone gets all the all the glory what happened here oh jeez it's broken hold on and we wouldn't want it other way you know for this means that in order for god to work through us we don't need to produce a superior might okay or godliness okay so instead my best is we all simply rely upon the almighty god himself all right so today my best is 
it is Women's Day. Women supporting women. A great way to show our love and respect to all women in the world. So, you know, all those women also who have gone before us. So, women who are actively engaged in, like, empowerment, in social media, stuff like that, innovations. So, we try our best to leave, like, a stamp or a mark or a signature. So, people from the next generations, you know, will someday learn from us or maybe remember us. But this is years from now, people on earth will not talk about you and me. They won't probably recall our lives either or rehash memories about us or maybe even remember us. We will be forgotten soon. Maybe, you know. In the next generations to come so those women who fought in the wars okay we can just imagine how known you know respected and admired they were by hundreds or thousands in their generations but now you know years have gone by and even though we have their names recorded you know let's be honest They are forgotten, but remember besties, you know, forgotten, but they matter. All those people who, who were already like the, those deceased patient, you know, people, they do, they do, and they did matter. They matter because although forgotten by us or for by some of us you know they existed they did exist so right now they are just conscious people in our subconscious world unless we literally like open the book and search their name this and that, that. so how about the people in the bible in the scripture how you know now now they see their true significance the fact that are forever saved in Christ or probably you know in hell so how many people knew them you know matters little so the fame okay and best is the their fame has passed what matters is did they trust the Lord did they reflect on his glory while on earth and and so are are they now in, with Christ, with His presence, or they, they're they not? So, are they in Christ, or they are separated from Him? So, have you heard about this earthly fame? So, how many of you have own, um, their own TikTok accounts, or YouTube, or a vlogger, or Instagram? Yeah. You know and other social medias so you know us too we're like them okay so even if our names are recorded in some database okay somewhere somewhere in earth so a thousand years from now or a hundred years from now do you feel how like trivial that sounds like a history we will be forgotten by this earth so it's not that we don't matter, we do, but what will be the incompatible, like importance forever will be if we're in Christ. If during this life we became identified with him and his glory and his fame, if we trusted, if we loved and followed him as our Lord God and Savior, or if we did not, so fame, my best is, is fleeting like mist. But our souls are sure as the ocean. Where then will we be? So, or better yet, my best is, who will we be with? Or best yet, who are we identified forever with? Christ or you know, with Satan. 
So we will be forgotten eventually. So what matters forever is if we're in Christ. If we're in Christ. So for those of us who do trust the Lord, you know, such a reminder that we'll be forgotten is a shout of emancipation. So there's this liberating message in knowing you'll be forgotten. <laughs> so we're now released from the slavery, you know, to fame. Since we know it won't work. It won't last. That's only temporary. Fame is temporary. So our identity is in the forever famous, lastingly loved Jesus Christ. So our lives are not meant to be lived seeking our remembrance. Okay? That won't come. It will never happen. But knowing, okay, that now we're free from such futility, okay? When fame and like glorifying yourself you know dominate much of our thoughts then it dims our happiness okay we know we won't be remembered when we see god didn't design us for this purpose when we see that being in the famous jesus christ matters much more so freedom comes then and only then can we forsake living for straw and live satisfied in love and obedience, okay, to wherever Christ calls us? My question is, what profits a man if he gains earthly fame? Nothing much. So, our profit instead is to be in Christ. So living this way, my best is, is wealthy, okay? Peaceful and worthwhile. This will last forever. This is our joy. This is what will matter to us all. This is what I would like to be remembered later on by the next generations to come. You know, I will be remembered that I'm a proud servant and follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And I will reveal to you the final makeup look. And again, happy, happy International Women's Day. Happy Women's Day to all. Love you all. God bless. Hello, my besties. So this is the final makeup look. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share, and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Love you all so much. God bless you all.
Oh,